You need a parachute! That's a backpack! <laughs> While Banjo-Kazooie is critically acclaimed and considered by many to be one of the best 3D platformers of all time, Banjo-Tooie is a bit more... divisive. While still a great game, rather than the isolated worlds approach similar to Super Mario 64, Banjo-Tooie ended up expanding into a massive adventure game with interconnected worlds, and that interconnectedness simultaneously ends up being both Banjo-Tooie's greatest strength and its greatest weakness. Taking a quick detour into a neighboring level to complete a task can be fun, and it does a great job with the world building. But inversely, some of the backtracking can get a bit tedious when you need to revisit locations multiple times just for a single collectible, making some parts of the game fall a bit flat. So that got me wondering, how much of the game can I complete without any backtracking? The rules would be simple. For each of the eight main levels, I visit once, collect everything I can in one go, and then once I leave, I can never go back. And then the hub world, of course, will be a bit different because you have situations such as the plateau, which serves as the connection path between multiple levels. So for the hub world, the rule will simply be that I can only collect what's available on my first visit to that screen. But of course, I'm not the first person to ever attempt such a challenge. The YouTuber Cloud Connection has a good video on this too, and you should check that out afterwards if you haven't. But the big difference between our two videos is that he focuses on doing things the intended way no matter what, but I will be using every single trick in the book. Which means that I'll be playing on the North American Nintendo 64 release, and some of these tricks may have been patched out in different versions. And with all that established, let's begin. Starting off in Spiral Mountain, we can collect this Cheeto page here, but we have multiple items that we can't collect. Thankfully, most of them are optional. We can't free the fish to unlock the swimming upgrade until we get the build drill from level 2, and we can't collect the mystery egg from this game pack without the grip grab from level 1. This other game pack here normally requires the grenade eggs outside of level 3, but with a well-angled beak bomb, you can clip right through the gate and then collect the egg. You can clip through again to escape, or you can just death warp because there's a flying pad inside the cave too. And lastly, we have this Jinjo, which requires the Talon Torpedo from level 4. This is a so-close-yet-so-far moment. We can glitch ourselves into walking underwater, but then we can't actually clip through the boulder itself. There is more to say about this Jinjo, but I'll save it for the very end. So after leaving Spiral Mountain and beating Klungo, we arrive at Jinjo Village. There's another optional game pack that we can't collect, and then there's this treble clef sitting on top of a house. This is actually the only set of notes out of all 900 in the game that you're expected to backtrack for, and it's supposed to require the grip grab from level 1. But there's a slight oversight where using the Beak Buster gives you a very slight height boost. So with a well-timed backflip to Beak Buster, you can reach the top without needing to backtrack, making all 900 notes collectible. We then get our first Jiggy from King Jingling, and the ability to zoom from Goggles before moving on to the Wooded Hollow, where we grab our first Jinjo, and because we got a mystery egg, we may as well claim the Briggle Bash before heading off to level 1. And being the first level, things are straightforward enough. We can grab every single empty Honeycomb, Jinjo, and Cheeto page, as well as 8 out of 10 Jiggies without any fancy tricks. For Jiggy 9, you normally need the Build Drill from level 2 to enter this cave before knocking the Jiggy down from atop the pillars, but using the Feathery Flap and Beak Buster gives you just enough distance and height to reach each pillar. Alternatively, if you're using Cheats, which can be unlocked in this level, the Super Banjo Cheat that lets you run faster allows you to run and jump from here to grab the Jiggy, but I'm not using any Cheats in this run because I had to ensure that everything was obtainable without it. And then for Jiggy 10, you actually have to go to level 5. This is an example of what Cloud Connection refers to as a detour jiggy. You quickly pop in into an isolated section of another level and then come right back. So most people wouldn't really consider this backtracking. However, rules are rules, and I said that once I leave a level, I will not return no matter what, so I can only collect 9 out of 10 jiggies in level 1. I'll still keep a separate tally at the very end for moments like this, but for now, 9 out of 10 jiggies is a pretty good start. So as we start making our way to level 2, we can collect the notes and empty honeycomb in the plateau but then there's this Jinjo trapped under a boulder. Most people would say that this isn't backtracking, since you learn the build drill in level 2, which is just a few steps away. However, I already said that for the hub world, the rule is that you can only collect what's available on your first visit to that screen. Rules are rules, and therefore... We're going to use a glitch called the Egg Barge, one of many tricks I learned from the channel of the no longer active YouTuber Chrono Keys. By shooting an egg and then using the beak barge, your hitbox gets extended much further than usual, which means that we can collect this Jinjo without needing the build drill. To answer your next question about the goldfish from Spiral Mountain though, it won't work on him because he has a cutscene tied to the boulder itself being broken, but that's just an optional upgrade anyways. So now we're off to level 2, where we immediately come across this Cheeto page on top of the sign at the entrance. Apparently the game expects you to use the springy step shoes that you learn how to use in level 5, but you can just jump from the rope. 
a solution so obvious that I thought that was the intended way the first time I ever played the game. So that means that every Cheeto page and every empty honeycomb is collectible in this level. But then for Jiggies, we can only collect 7 out of 10 on our first visit without any tricks. Which brings us to another oversight on this level, the Power Shed. You're supposed to split up and keep the lights on, but you don't learn how to split up until level 3. But you learn how to use the fire eggs right outside of level 2, and you can use them to light up the path instead. Once again, a solution so obvious that I actually thought that this was the intended strategy the first time I ever played. And then next, let's talk about the detonator transformation. Normally, the detonator can move around, float in the water, jump, and detonate. But if you're moving against the wall while in the water at just the right angle, pressing A and then B with the correct timing causes you to levitate for some reason. And this means we can glitch our way up to the top of the waterfall without needing the springy step shoes from level 5. But then we have this Jinjo trapped up here. And while you would think that you can just use the levitate glitch again, I cannot find anywhere nearby to activate this glitch in order to get enough height. The Detours crowd is allowed to count this one because you swim through a pipe in level 4, and then in the span of several seconds you wind up at the top, grab the Jinjo, and then climb the chain to leave. But for my rule set, I can't count it. And then the final Jiggy is uncollectible, because in order to rescue Dilbert of the Rat, you need to learn the build drill in level 2 before going back to level 1 to break the boulder. And because you can't break the boulder or clip through it from the Glitter Gulch mine side, not even the Detours crowd can collect this one. But all in all, collecting everything except for one Jiggy and one Jinjo in level 2 is still better than I thought I would do. So then moving on to level 3, this one's actually incredibly straightforward. With the exception of a single Jiggy, everything is collectible through standard play on your first visit. The problem lies with rounding up Miss Boggy's missing children. Soggy can be bribed with some fries, and then Moggy can be convinced by giving him a gentle whack. But after bribing Groggy with a burger, he needs to be taxi-packed back by Banjo, which we don't learn until level 5, so we're out of luck here. And then on our way to level 4, we get our notes, ice eggs, and a globo that we won't need, but then there's also this Jinjo, which requires either the Claw Clamber Boots or a Clockwork Kazooie Egg, neither of which we have yet. For the Detours crowd, you can still count this Jinjo though, because you warp to this exact point to walk to level 7, and then you can just turn around and fire a Clockwork Kazooie Egg before heading off. No real backtracking, but for my rule set, I can't count it, so moving on to level 4, Jolly Roger's Lagoon. We can easily collect every Jinjo and Empty Honeycomb, and then for Cheeto Pages, we can collect 2 out of 3 normally. But for this last one, the game expects you to use Kazooie's Glide, which is learned in level 7. However, there's an incredibly easy glitch to perform called a Pack Jump, which enables Banjo to jump out of a pack whack and allows us to easily collect this final Cheeto Page. So moving on to the Jiggies, 7 out of 10 are obtainable via normal play. The Jiggy in the Smuggler's Cavern is supposed to require Kazooie's Glide, or you can instead grab the Turbo Trainers from Blubba's Shop, run and jump at the last second before they wear out, and then wing whack and flap onto the platform, giving us 8 out of 10 Jiggies. But then Jiggy number 9 requires us to use the Hatch ability, which we don't learn until the next level, and then Jiggy 10 is one of the most infamous backtracking Jiggies in the entire game, which makes Jolly Roger's Lagoon our worst level yet, but even then, all but 2 Jiggies isn't terrible. So after leaving, beating Klungo a second time, and then collecting the notes and Jinjo in the Wasteland, we learn how to use a Clockwork Kazooie Egg, which is undoubtedly the most broken ability in the entire game. So broken that discussing level 5, Pterodactyland is going to be more scattered compared to the rest of the levels. Starting off, this Jinjo here normally requires you to transform into the large T-Rex, step on this switch, transform back, and then run back and grab it before the timer runs out. Or you can just fire a Clockwork Kazooie Egg through the gap and save a bunch of time. Meanwhile, this Jiggy here requires you to roar out the word item in Morse code, or you can once again just glitch your way through with a Clockwork Kazooie Egg and save a bunch of time. Then for Dippy, he gives you a Jiggy once you refill his pool, which is done by draining a different pool in level 8. This one doesn't require any backtracking to obtain though, because once you drain the pool in level 8, that Jiggy automatically appears in your inventory without ever having to revisit level 5. But the other part of this series of events is that you're supposed to revisit level 5 after Dippy's pool is refilled in order to swim up to this Cheeto page or you can just fire a Clockwork Kazooie Egg. And then this Cheeto page was meant to be collected as the Baby T-Rex, or you can just use an Egg Barge. You can also use Egg Barges to save some time in the Stomping Plains, but don't worry about that Banjo switch for now, we'll talk about it later. So then moving on to hatching Terry's eggs, I wanted to see if I could skip needing to scare away the Caveman as the giant T-Rex, and with a perfectly timed Beak Bomb, I managed to awkwardly clip through. I actually couldn't find any documentation on this, so I thought that maybe I discovered something new, but I was wrong because of the existence of the Clockwork Warp. Whenever a Clockwork Kazooie is active, if either it or the player gets attacked at the exact same time as a screen change, the game doesn't know what to do so it accidentally warps the player to the new screen instead. Which means that at best, I only discovered a much worse way to perform a skip. 
But regardless, I was still able to hatch all of Terry's eggs without needing the giant T-Rex. But if you're going to do this trick, make sure that the egg in this cave is not the very last one that you hatch, because the last one will always be too big to fly, and you'll need to taxi pack it back to the nest. But you can't leave the way you came because you never cleared the path. So if you're going to perform this skip, just make sure it's one of the first three eggs that you hatch, and then death warp back to the world entrance, and then hatch the last egg somewhere else. But while we're in this cave, we'll talk about the first jiggy that we can't get without backtracking, warming and feeding the Oogle Boogle tribe. The warming part is simple enough, but getting the food means returning to Witchy World, and despite it being a quick walk and death warp away, it's still backtracking. And then the other uncollectible Jiggy from level 5 is helping Scrotty's family, which we can't complete because in order to heal Scrat, you have to take the train back to the clifftop and then use Mumbo's healing there before returning back to Pterodactyl Land. Making the total for level 5, every collectible minus 2 Jiggies, same as level 4. But interestingly enough, because of the Clockwork Kazooie eggs, we didn't even need to transform into the T-Rex once, meaning we don't need Mumbo either, and we can just keep both of those Globos. Which means that next up is level 6, Grunty Industries. A fun fact about this level, if you play the game in German, the level is instead called Grunty GmbH, which stands for Gesellschaft mit Beschränkterhaftung, or in English, Company with Limited Liability, which is quite fitting, just a neat little detail I thought I'd share. But back on topic, this level is known for being the one that outright forces you to backtrack in order to truly even begin the level. You unlock the train station from the outside, visit a train station from another level, and then take the train into Grunty Industries in order to infiltrate it. And while I actually think it's a neat design choice, it still requires backtracking, and I'm going to stick to my rule set no matter what. But if we call this level a loss and try to move on, then we can't learn various moves, including the Claw Clamber Boots, which are needed to reach Cauldron Keep. It's impossible, that's gonna be hard to do. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? But we can just fire a Clockwork Kazooie Egg through the door and then open the switch, and we don't even need to open up the train station for this level which means that with barely an inconvenience at all, we can partake in the level like normal. And there's even a few time savers, such as being able to open up all the elevator doors with the Briegel Bash. But through intended gameplay, we can collect every empty honeycomb, every Cheeto page, and 4 out of 5 Jinjos, but only 7 out of 10 Jiggies. For Jiggy 8, apparently the game expects you to use the Glide ability from level 7 to reach the Tin Tops, but it's so easy to reach this area normally as Kazooie that I didn't even know that gliding was the intended solution, making this an easy 8 out of 10. Then for Jiggy 9, waiting across the Toxic Waste, you're supposed to use the Sack Pack from level 8, but there's a glitch with swimming. The Toxic Waste won't spit you out until a certain amount of time has elapsed, so by jumping quickly and repeatedly, you can cross the Toxic Waste with no problem. I did make a slight mistake though by crossing with both Banjo and Kazooie when the switch was made for just solo Banjo. So I just egg barged the Jiggy instead, and then for some reason stepping on the switch broke the glass anyways? I have no clue. But while we're in the same room, we have the last Jinjo. Normally, this isolated room requires you to swim through a pipe in Jolly Roger's Lagoon, but we can reach him with an egg barge, making every Jinjo in this level collectible. And then for Jiggy 10, you're supposed to learn the Shack Pack from level 8 so that you can sink to the bottom of the Toxic Waste unharmed, but there's yet another glitch with the swimming mechanics. When Kazooie uses the Leg Spring, which we learn in this level, if you keep the jump button held the entire time, she'll sink all the way to the bottom of the water first. So by using this glitch, we can just float to the bottom of the waist and grab the Jiggy before we take any damage. Which means that to my complete surprise, the one level in the game that tries to force you to backtrack to even begin it, is instead the very first level we were able to complete 100% on the very first visit. Definitely did not expect that twist. So after that major success, we move on to level 7, Hailfire Peaks, where via normal gameplay, we can collect every empty honeycomb, every Cheeto page, and every Jinjo. And then because we helped the aliens back in Jolly Roger's Lagoon, we can get 7 out of 10 Jiggies. Jiggy number 8 we can't obtain though because we have to return back to level 1 in order to transform into Stony Banjo before playing in the Coliseum Kickball Tournament, and then go back to transform back into Banjo. And then Jiggy number 9 is unobtainable due to a technicality. You can power up the oil drill in Hailfire Peaks, but it spawns in an isolated segment of Grunty Industries, so despite being a several second detour, I can't count it. And then Jiggy number 10 you have to go back to the Stomping Plains. Remember that banjo switch I said not to worry about yet back in Pterodactyland? Well now it's time to talk about it. You're supposed to learn the snooze pack in level 6 before returning to level 5 to obtain this jiggy in an isolated section of level 7. So that means backtracking. But with a well-timed series of jumps, you can clip through Stomp on Adon's foot without taking any damage, meaning that at least the Detours crowd can claim this one. But for my rule set, I can't do anything about it because I can't actually clip through this wall with a Clockwork Kazooie Egg. Okay. 
At least not on our own, which is why we're going to enlist the help of one of the level's bosses, Chilly Willy. As you traverse the ice side of Hellfire Peaks, he'll periodically fire hail at you until you defeat him. And as you can see, it causes the screen to shake upon impact. So by positioning yourself just right, you'll be safe from the hail, and the screen shake effect will actually create a gap just wide enough for you to fire Clockwork Kazooie Egg through, meaning that we can in fact grab this Jiggy without any backtracking. And that's not even the only opportunity to exploit Chilly Willy either. You can also skip the entire mess of a sequence required for getting the train into the ice side of Hailfire Peaks by taking advantage of the hail near Boggy's Igloo in order to clip a Clockwork Kazooie Egg through the ground. So we end Hailfire Peaks with all but two Jiggies. And then because this Jinjo here can be obtained with a Clockwork Kazooie Egg instead of the Snowball, it means that I don't need to transform at all and can save another Globo. Which brings us to the final level, Cloud Cuckoo Land, and this one is pretty straightforward. We have every ability at this point, so everything is obtainable. We even have a number of time savers too. Most notably, we don't need to actually open the safe, because we can just fire a Clockwork Kazooie Egg into it. Which I'm going to do because being forced to find all of the switches for the safe combination would be literally 1984. So now we can start tallying everything up. We got all of the musical notes, all of the empty honeycombs, and all of the Cheeto pages. So next up are the Jiggies themselves. And in order to access the final battle, we need a minimum of 70 Jiggies. We got our free Jiggy from King Jingling and Ilo Hags, and then for levels 1, 2, and 3, we got 9 Jiggies each. For both levels 4 and 5, we got 8 Jiggies. For level 6, we got all 10. Still can't believe that. Then for level 7, we got 8 Jiggies. And level 8, we got all 10. Which brings our grand total to... 72 Jiggies. Just barely enough, and we didn't even need to talk about the Jinjos. But let's talk about them next anyways. The hub world, Ilo Hags, has 10 Jiggies for you to collect. The first one was the one given to you by King Jingling, and then the remaining nine are obtained by saving all of the members of each color Jinjo family. And while the number of Jinjos in each color house and the locations of the Jinjos themselves remain constant on every playthrough, what's randomized on each different playthrough are the colors of the Jinjos themselves at each location. Cloud Connection explains this in far greater detail, but in short, there are 33 different patterns. Which means that ideally, you would want as many of the unobtainable Jinjos as possible to be in the same family to minimize the number of Jiggies lost. In our run, we were unable to obtain a Jinjo in Spiral Mountain, Glitter Gulch Mine, and on the Clifftop. So all but three, which was way better than I would have guessed. So on a hypothetical worst possible seed, you would get six additional Jiggies, and then on a hypothetical best seed, you would get eight. Bringing the total to between 78 and 80 out of 90. And just my luck, all three of the Jinjos I missed were from different families. But regardless of my luck, the answer still remains that you can most certainly complete Banjo-Tooie without any of the backtracking. Or as some of you may phrase it, you can complete Banjo-Tooie without having any of the fun. So now that we're way in the clear for completing this challenge, let's add the reasonable detours. You can add the Jiggy for returning the Relic in level 1, and the Oil Drill Jiggy in level 7. Then for Jinjos, you can add the one in Glitter Gulch Mine, and the one on the Clifftop, making all but one Jinjo obtainable, and bringing the Detours Allowed group to a guaranteed 82 out of 90 Jiggies. But is it possible to improve even further? Theoretically, yes. There's a very precise glitch known as a bit clip. Without getting too technical here, the floors in both Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie are made up of triangles, and it's possible to fall through those intersection points due to floating point rounding. I'll link to both a very detailed video on the topic by the 8-Bit Beast, and I'll also link to a 100% tool assisted speedrun recently released by Ring Rush which not only features a ton of bit clips, but also shows that you can in fact obtain the Spiral Mountain Jinjo. But pulling off a bit clip as a human in real time is a completely different story, and the guides for some of these involve incredibly precise setups. But if we could remove these barriers, then hypothetically, because of the Spiral Mountain Jinjo, my route could be 79 to 80 Jiggies, and then the Detours route would be able to obtain every single Jinjo, bringing their total to 83 out of 90. But from there, there are still so many hypothetical bit clip scenarios that there may even need to be another video one day. Because maybe you could grab this optional game pack or the Mega Globo by going underneath. Maybe you could obtain the Glitter Gulch Mine Jinjo by going underneath and swimming up. Or maybe you could turn the Delberta Jiggy into a detour by clipping through the boulder. And then because the 100% task shows that you don't even need to unlock the levels before entering them because the floors are merely a suggestion, maybe a new route that tackles these levels out of order could be theory crafted and then make some of those final remaining Jiggies collectible on the first visit. But for now, I'll end this video by saying thank you to all the dedicated players over the years whose research made this run possible, and for everyone watching, I hope you all have a wonderful day.